All right, to finish off our animation project, we have to create a refined finished storyboard, which takes our sketch and basically replaces it with finished frames from our highest quality resolution animation. But let me review a little bit once we finish our animation how we get the different animated files from it. So here I am in frame by frame view with my timeline in Photoshop. And I've set all my timing and I've you know played all my different games. To really make it work. I've got the rain in there. Got the dinosaur coming in. I have the camera moves. I have the sun breaking through. So I've got transformation in both the environment and in the characters. And you're only required to do a, a transformation in, in one of those. I like that rain. I wish that lasted a little longer. Okay, so now once your animation is all set, remember that this resolution, if I do image size, is pretty high. Right? In my case, it's 7.5 inches by 7.5 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That's a lot. That means every frame in this animation, or rather every layer, is 20 megabytes. So to save that as an animation with, let's see how many frames I actually have, 20 megabytes times 71, that's just way too much for um, an online browser to animate. So in order to animate it online, we have to convert it to a graphic interchange format file, a GIF file. And to do that, we first have to downsample its quality. But there are other options as well. So before you shrink it, you should always first save it as your PSD. And I called mine Stage with Assets. But this is basically your final full resolution animation in Photoshop. But you can also save it for yourself as a video file that's full resolution. You're not going to be able to put it up online, but like most kind of high def movies, this is going to be very large. It's even larger than your high def screens, at least this one is. So this file is, is 1.2 gigabytes right now. And in order to render it as a, a finished video, you have to click on the window options. Um, not within the frame by frame timeline, but within this timeline, the timing, I forget what they call this, but the timing timeline. <laughs> and then you go to the window options and then it will allow you to do what's called render video. And I've already done it and it takes a little bit of time. So I'm not going to do it there, but you go through those steps, just use all the defaults and you will get a nice clean video file which is uh, an MP4. You can pick other versions as well, but the MP4 you can put onto YouTube, you can put into iTunes, you can play with QuickTime. And if we open that, and I've done this in the, previous, in the previous demo, but just to remember, when you open it in QuickTime, you can actually, let's see, see all of that resolution and if you had a bigger screen, I could actually even make it larger size. And you can loop it within QuickTime too, so it keeps playing. Okay, the problem is when you do that, when you switch to this timeline view instead of the frame by frame view, it doesn't always keep your looping your playback. So just be aware of that. For your GIF animation, you definitely want it to loop. And there's a few places you can check that. So once you've done that, once you've rendered it out and saved it for yourself as a movie file, then you're going to go back to the frame by frame view. And then you see how it, it took out my looping. I want to turn back my looping to play through forever. And then you want to go to image size and you want to shrink it to a size that's much more manageable. And I'm going to do 7.5 inches by 7.5 inches. You can do something like 8 by 8 inches if you like by 100 pixels per inch. That takes each layer, which was 20 megabytes, down to less than 2 megabytes. Or to fewer than 2 megabytes. 
if you do the, the, the next step of making a GIF animation, but you leave it too large, you're just setting yourself up for kind of failure. <laughs> and the other thing I like to do is this black frame, which I like to have for my video. For my GIF animation, I'm going to crop that out. So I'm actually going to use the cropping tool. I'm going to hold down Shift and Option so it stays a perfect square. And I'm just going to crop in a little bit. I don't like how the crop tool is so jumpy. You often have to zoom in. But if I hold down Shift and Option, it will do it equally from all sides. And I want to go just inside my black border there. Hit Return. And voila. And actually, just to really make the, the quality of it as good as possible, I'm going to go to before I change the image size, I'm going to crop it first because we're, we're down sampling it here. So if I crop first and then shrink, I'll get better quality in the end product. Okay, so I cropped. And you'll see that cropping is like a cookie cutter that goes through all your frames. So your animation will still play just as cleanly, just as beautifully, even though you cropped them all. And in looking at this again, I don't think I want the long one second or two second delay here. I want it to feel more like someone just trying to get a sense of the scene. So I'm going to do a, a 0.8 second timing on that first one. So it gets started a little faster. And it's like, what? What's that? I'm going to watch that for a while. Oh no, what happened? Did you see that? Oh no, what happened? Oh, the cropping, that messed it up because of our movements that we did in. So when you do automatic movements, you got to keep the black frame. Bummer. That was a new experiment. But that's why we test it. Okay, so I'm keeping the black frame. No problem. I learned so much trying these new things. You got to experiment. Now the only reason it cropped content off like the clouds is because instead of creating assets where they are in different positions, I actually just moved them within the frame. And so if they were cropped out of the frame, when I cut them, it would only show the part that was still within what I cropped. So better not to crop. Okay, so this is good. So now we take the image size down. We want to get it under two megabytes for sure for each uh, image. But I'm going to go ahead and make it 8 inches by 8 inches by 100. That's a good standard that I've used in the past. So it's going to be 800 by 800 pixels. This is reducing the quality of our finished animation. But it's still at 100% resolution, still is a nice size on the screen. And then to save as a, a GIF, we don't just say save as, we actually say save for web. And it will automatically give us the option of saving as a, a graphic interchange format. And these are the settings we want, 256 colors. That's how GIFs save space by really um, limiting the colors. And then by having bicubic smoother. And then everything else. I mean, these are the settings I, I tend to use. You can play it through. You want to make sure the loading options say forever. And to fit it all on screen, you can zoom in and out. Then you just hit save. Keep your same name, but save it to the desktop as a GIF file. And then you need to test it. So these are the 256 colors. So then on the desktop, you test it by right-clicking and opening it with a browser. Should work in any browser. 
and you'll see how it limits the colors, makes it kind of grainy and chunks them, but it plays through pretty quickly and pretty smoothly. All right. So now I have the first two things I need to upload for this assignment, two out of three things. I have my GIF animation and I have my storyboard. Now I need to do the clean storyboard. Now to do that, I can close my GIF animation and I don't want to save these changes. I don't want to save anything after the image size. So I can just go back a space or I can close it and not save and reopen it. But I remember I changed the timing a little bit. So I'm actually going to go back a little bit before image size. And if I really didn't want that black frame, you'll see how I could I could get rid of it. So right now, each of these frames was constructed very carefully from combining different assets. But what I can also do and what I want to do for my storyboard is to flatten each animation frame into its own layer. So I'm at full resolution again, 350 pixels per inch. And what I want to do now is I want to click on the, the timeline frame by frame animation options and say flatten frames into layers. And now it will take all 70, I think I had 71 frames and make an individual layer of them. So here you see frame 71 all the way down to frame one. Then I can delete every layer underneath. So out of about 20 layers, I made 71 frames. Okay. And now each of these frames is 100% opaque. So it doesn't rely on, on anything special. It's just playing the frames with the little eyeball at a certain timing at 100% opacity each time at full quality. all the faults, everything. The reason I don't save this as a PSD for animating is because it doesn't allow me to play with the animation anymore. It just finalizes it. Okay, now, if I wanted to, I could crop it if I wanted to get rid of that black line. Because now I'm not relying on any uh, frame animation. I think I got it. Uh, maybe a little bit of black border remaining. Let me crop it again. A little bit closer in. Remember, it cuts through like a cookie cutter. So we'll go through all of your layers the same way, all at once, all 71 of them. And by setting up your file this way, where you flatten your layer, your frames into layers, it makes it really easy to set up the final storyboard. All right, because I just didn't want a black frame around each of my storyboard panels. I want it to be nice and, f and clean. Okay, now, inspired by my sketch, which is the first thing I'm submitting, right? Inspired by this, I want to go through these big moments in my story, or whatever the moments ended up in, that were started in my sketch. So the first frame, I might show, let's see, how long does it take for me to reveal it? Yeah, the first frame, I'm not even going to show this camera move. Well, maybe I will, because <laughs> I have that kind of hid, hidden in there. So I have to pick what's the first kind of moments. And it's the introduction of the bird. And so we'll get into that with the next demo, how we make the final storyboard.